He is uh, Keegan Michael Key. He's actor, comedian, writer, producer. And he is uh, Emmy winning actor who is narrating Drafted. It's a new docuseries podcast in association with iHeartRadio, Treefort Media, and Clutch Sports Group. What it does, it follows top college football players as they prepare to enter the NFL draft. First two episodes launched just last Monday. Two new episodes releasing each week. He is the uh, well, he's a Lions fan too, and you the Lions picked up a victory on on Sunday. Do you want the Lions to do well, or like they win when they're not supposed to win here, Key? Right. No, I do want them to do well. I, I've I've wanted them to do well since I was eight years old. But um, yeah, they were not supposed to win that game, which I which I'm jubilant about. But I um, the thing is that. Every season recently, the thing that you can hope the most for is that they play spoiler to somebody going into the playoffs. That's about as much as we've been able to. Uh, that's been that's where we've been finding our happiness. So uh, I do want them to win. I, I would love it if we if we were in a, pl- a position to not have the third pick. Um, I'm very excited about our pick this year about Jeff Okuda, his first interception this last weekend, which was very exciting. <laughs> Break it down. Uh, what's that? <laughs> Break it down here. You know, brick- <laughs> <laughs> very early. <right. laughs> I, I love that. But, you know, when you start to the Lions are one of the great untold stories They're You know, the Cubs ended up winning. Like you have these yeah. franchises that have won. The Lions might be that last great story in the NFL. I think they are. I think I think they definitely are. I wouldn't mind being I wouldn't I don't even part of me says I'm going to be impatient. Like I'm going to be childlike and be impatient and say, Oh, I want the winning to happen immediately. But God, Dan, would I be able to save it? What if I was 82? You know what I mean? You know, when you see those stories, those, (laughs) those, those those news stories, there's the old guy with the Walker and the tears streaming down his face. Like I never thought the Cleveland Browns, well, I shouldn't mention the Cleveland Browns, but I never thought we don't want to talk about something that's completely impossible, but, but you know, I would love to be, I would, I know. Isn't that mean? They're not even in the NFC. Leave them alone, Keegan. But it would be, <laughs> it would be great if I could just be that old man in the chair, you know, with like my old ball cap that's too big for my head, going, "We did it! We did!" You know, surrounded by my grandchildren, that whole situation. I, I still, I was just telling the guys, recreating that story that you told when you go in that Monday, and and uh, Peel was either playing Madden or watching football or just somehow heard DeBrickashaw Ferguson's name and how it, it was such a light bulb there. Like, you know, I, I remember DeBrickashaw Ferguson at like Virginia. Like I, I'm so accustomed to those names, but here's, you know, Jordan Peele, who's not a sports fan and he's going, wait a minute. And then you're a sports fan. So you probably never looked at this and listened to this and went, Oh, there's nothing. Wait, that's funny. That's, that's a football name. I'm like, what are we talking about here? It's a, I, I think I even said to Jordan I said, when he said, man, how is there a dude named DeBrickashaw Ferguson? <laughs> and I said, I said, wait a minute, first of all, I said, that's in the pros, Jordan. We haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg when you get to college. The names. The na- and, and the funny thing is, to his, t- to his credit and to his talent, he didn't even do any research when he wrote those, the rest of those names. He just made them up. <laughs> the blueprint was to British off Ferguson. I'm like, okay, guess if we're going to use a blueprint, that would be the one. Either that, you know, or a Barkevius Mingo. I mean, all he needed was to hear those two names, and he was off to the races. Man. I got one for you. Uh, yeah. This guy plays at Kentucky. Pauly? Yeah, running back Cavassier Smoke. Cavassier <laughs> yeah. Smoke? Yeah. Yeah. His last name is Smoke. Amazing. Well, I'm okay with smoke. Curvassier. Curvassier, <laughs> as in that he must have come out of the womb a very sophisticated looking baby. Curvassier. For them to call him Curvassier. You know what I mean? And he's got a brother, Hennessy. Oh, my. Of course. No, he, does. No, he does. I, I was joking about that. But. <laughs> oh, I believe you 100%. <laughs> yes. uh, when I was a kid, the big thing was um, that there were, there in my neighborhood, there were two kids named i'm going to go the exact opposite direction on this there were two kids named a and b johnson they were twins <laughs> and their names were a and b and i'm like you can't do that to a child <laughs> I, I i had some rough names that i grew up with and that, that i can't even say them on the show oh jeez <laughs> it, it's off color and I gotcha. uh, yes but you know you grow up and that's just the person's name. You don't even think twice about it. And then somebody goes, wait, 
you went to school with somebody named that? Wait. Right, right, Ex- exactly, right. And I know is it, you just kind of think to yourself, oh, that's just, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, Giorgio, or Giorgio, not, not, the, not the craziest name. <laughs> I went to school, I went to high school. Now, here's another one. I went to high school um, with a gentleman by the name of Ignacio Hawthorne. <laughs> great name. I thought that was a great name because it sounded like he should have been in an old Dickens novel. <laughs> Ignacio Hawthorne. <laughs> like, like, but you just call him Iggy or do you- Iggy? Yeah, Iggy. It's which is like one to me one of the best nicknames ever. You know, it's like also a good Detroit nickname because Iggy pops from Detroit. Oh, that's right. And the, I have and to the put, I have to put in I have to talk about at least two to three uh, people who are from Detroit on every interview. And, uh, yeah. Did you get in everybody you needed to get in? I think I got everybody in. Oh, I just have to say Barry Sanders. I just have to say <laughs> it randomly every time. Uh, he's uh, Keegan Michael Key, and uh, he's got a new podcast here. So, are you working with LeBron's people? On this, yes, cl- clutch yeah, sports? the clutch, the, the clutch media people, yeah, that's that's who um, they're one of the producers of uh, of Drafted, and so and and um, they're also repped by my agency. So we were we were collaborating, working together on this thing. Have you hung with LeBron before? I haven't. I have. I have not even had the pleasure of meeting him yet. So, well, how did you how did you get involved in narrating this? Where these are guys who are going to be drafted, or the process of being drafted. The, the producers, they came to me and asked me if it was something I'd be interested in. And I think they, they had already known that I had an interest in college football and in pro football. And the draft to me is always, you know, I think April is always a great time to have the draft because it's right in the midst of all of your, your yearning and longing for the new football season to start. It's so early, but it's, it's long enough away from the Super Bowl that you're going, come on, man, it's with all these other sports now, when is the football coming? And so they, 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 um, they, they had been put together by my agents with me and uh, they knew that I liked it. And I said, this, I'm in, I'm hundred percent in, I'd love to do this. And it was such a unique situation because, you know, the, the, this year's draft took place during a very unprecedented time and nobody was in the same room. Everybody was in their individual bubbles, but our producers sent uh, microphones to all these players and they got really honest raw stories from these guys and a lot of the time the guys would walk around with their mics on sometimes they didn't know the mics were on so you got really emotional moments with their family and their and their friends and talking to coaches on the phone it was great it was great it was really we got lots of fantastic footage what else are you working on you in well, that, right now in- Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, in that mind of yours, you're probably uh, got a, a million ideas here. But how do you get those ideas then down into paper and then kind of see a project through? I am. Um, I always. I'm like. I always work with a writer and a, a, a fellow writer. I always have to. I'm a. I'm a partner person. So I had Jordan for years, and now um, my wife is my writing partner, and she's uh, brilliant. But what happens is I'll, I'll come up with a general idea or what you do is like when you start getting into a creative process, you'll finish a creative process. The way that you start a new one is by what I just call opening up the antenna. So you have to open up the antenna to notice absolutely everything and then certain things will spark for you. And then those are the things that you try to drop in. And I, I, I'm very much kind of a bigger idea person. And I, I'll start writing down ideas, writing down themes. And then whoever I'm writing with, we start to come together so that they can go, well, what about this line? What about that line? And, and they kind of helped me hone down that bigger idea into a more specific idea. So that's what I did. With, I, do, I, did, I did that with Jordan and do that with Elle, where I go, what about this? And then they go, and then what you do, Dan, is you just kind of start playing off of each other so that you just keep distilling down that bigger idea until it gets to what you want it to be. Um, and that's, that's always, that's been my process. That's been my process. I brought up, to the uh, Danettes that uh, I, I was watching a, a, a Key and Peel, and uh, you were playing a doctor, and, and Peel was the gang leader, and you're explaining in doctor's terminology <laughs> about his mom is sick and she's overweight, and then, you know, Jordan is firing back like you're dissing his mom, and he right. it's like a rap battle going back and forth. <laughs> and one of the great walk-off punchlines of all time that we can't say, but like, was there ever an, did all the episodes get greenlit? Like, did you ever have an episode uh, that somebody says, no, you can't do that? 
No, we actually, the Comedy Central was very liberal about that. They allowed us to do pretty much everything we wanted. The biggest, the funny thing is the biggest issues we ever had with them was early on in the process of the show. I would, we, 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 we so badly wanted to do Star Wars sketches or like a Star Wars parody. And, and then one of the producers was like, I don't know, Star Wars? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Star Wars is our mythology. <laughs> It's, Star Wars is never not popular. He's like, I don't know, is pop, it's Star Wars right now? Should we do Star Wars? I'm like, there's only six Star Wars movies out <laughs> right now. Let's, what do we, it's, no, you're right, you're right. It's not in the zeitgeist. <laughs> but that was the only thing they ever fought us on were these Star Wars uh, scenes. But the thing is, we had scenes that we pitched to Comedy Central, Dan, where they were like, yeah, sounds good. Like, oh, don't, you, don't you think it's a little... No, no, that's, hey, go for it, man. If you guys want to be on the edge. Yeah, we were just, thought you were going to say no. Okay, so, <laughs> and then you have to make it. Then you've got to make the sketch. Um, uh, so we, they were, they, they never, ever pushed on subject matter. They were always like, go for it, go for it. it, it Jordan, I remember he had some trepidation about, if you remember the um, slave auction sketch. Yes. He was like, I don't know. I just wanted to, because it was kind of an exercise. I wanted to see if I could do something that would make slavery funny or I could find a way to do that. And then we pitched it and he got nervous. And then they, they greenlit it. They're like, go ahead and shoot it. And he was like, Ugh. but you know, it turned out to be one of our, I think one of our more memorable sketches at the end of the day. Oh, didn't you have the um, kind of a rap battle between, was it Malcolm X and Martin Luther King? And <laughs> yes, <you're>, yeah. <laughs> and you and you're trying to get the crowd on your side here yeah, by, exactly. by, by saying shocking things there. And, you know, Martin Luther King's doing it his way, and then Malcolm X is doing it his way, and then... Yeah, well. and then all of a sudden, next thing I do, I'm doing the worm on the ground. <laughs> to get the <laughs> by the way, a little tidbit. First time I'd ever done the worm yeah. or attempted to do the worm. <laughs> I just dropped to the ground. I'm just, just trying to outdo Jordan. And then the director goes, cut. And I get up, I go, all right. First one time and, I've ever done that in my life. One Does and anybody done. have some ice from my back? <laughs> so it was like just... Um, are you working on movies? Um uh, I'm doing a TV show right, or, or like a limited series right now for Apple, Apple Plus. Uh, I'm in Vancouver right now. And um, it's, uh, it's a musical. This is actually, by the way, my third musical, um, my third musical in the last year. Uh, I've done two other that I'm not, I'm not allowed to talk about right now. But, but uh, I, I did, you know, I did like a lot of kids who are actors or drama geeks. You grow up, you do musical theater in high school. And I did that for years. And I used to sing in a band. And um, somebody came to me and said, would you like to do this musical a year and a half ago? And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. I haven't sung in a while. So that's kind of been a thing I've been doing recently, which has been a lot of fun. How often do you sing? Like, I sing, I sing a lot, actually. I sing, I, I sing. Um, but you were I in a band? What kind of band were you in? It was, it was, it was, the, it was the early 90s. And it was like a cover. I was in a cover band. I used to perform at Grounds Coffee House on the campus of University of Detroit Mercy, my alma mater. And we'd go to Grounds Coffee House and sing, you know, like <laughs> Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> and, you know, and I used to wear, I used to wear, I wore a T-shirt that I can't say what the name, of the, what the words were on the T-shirt. But I, you know, Dan, that whole deal, like I, I wore a flannel shirt tied around my waist, <laughs> but never actually wore the shirt, just wore it around. You remember in the night, remember? Oh, the yeah. Eddie Vedder, the oh, shorts, yeah. the oh. combat boots, and the flannel shirt. Oh. But you don't wear the flannel shirt. You just have it there. Just in case, <laughs> you know, rainy Seattle. Yeah. The, uh, in in yeah. case your your wife or girlfriend needs, uh, you know, she, needs, she's needs cold. That shirt, right. right there. And we, right I there. was in a I was in a two bands, but the, <laughs> it was like pa Parliament Funkadelic, where both bands same guys, two different names. So one one band was called uh, Free Love Lemonade, and the other band <laughs> the other band was called Trip Master Monkey. Those were the names. Of course, of, the band. of yeah, course. What else? 1992. Of course. You Did you ever meet, you know, George Clinton? I've I never met him. I've and and I've always the the I'm I'm gonna do it again. The first two albums, the first two or three albums that Funkadelic ever released were made in Detroit. They were recorded in Detroit. And um, but I always wanted to meet him, uh, and I never have. I've seen him in concert a few times, but I've never met him. Yeah, a little Atomic Dog, you know, you should be. Oh, able yeah, to Atomic Dog. Yeah. George, George Clinton said, um, what did he say? Well, he was on an um, interview one time, 
and he said, someone said to them, do you think that, uh, do you believe that um, any kind of illicit drug like LSD um, influenced your uh, your career, your music? George Clinton said, hey man, I, I think I influenced LSD. <laughs> <laughs> Just a baller that's, answer. That's, uh, that is great. It, isn't great. there a line in that song where he goes, chase the cat? Like it's just yeah, out yeah, of yeah. Okay. Why must I be like that? Why must I chase the cat? Ain't nothing but the dog in me. It's just like, uh, uh, Great to Love talk to you, guy. man. Have fun in Vancouver. Good luck with uh, the podcast there, and great to connect with you again. You too, Dan. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Mike. That's like Keegan-Michael Key. Um the uh, podcast, by the way, it's, a, uh, it's called Drafted, a new docuseries podcast in association with iHeartRadio, Treefort Media, Clutch Sports Group, follows college players as they prepare to enter the NFL draft. The uh, first two episodes launched on Monday, two new episodes released uh, each week.